Hey, what's going on guys? My name is CarQ. Welcome to the CarCives, the CarQ Archives YouTube channel, which is my second channel. Uh, last week, I did a video called Ranking Easy to Hard Heroes in the Game for Beginners, which was mostly addressing something called Skill Floor, where if you picked a hero, you would immediately get value because they have a pretty low floor to extract value. However, this tier list is going to be something about Skill Ceiling. What is Skill Ceiling? Skill Ceiling is basically where a hero has like you know, a high ceiling to its uh, skill cap. So the more skilled you are at the hero, the more value you can extract. So uh, I can use last week's example with Lucio, a low skill floor. So he's actually pretty easy to pick up because you just have an aura. It does it for you. The high skill ceiling or the skill mastery is actually quite difficult for Lucio because once you master his incredibly difficult movement and learning how to lead your shots with the primary fire, the boop, he becomes an altogether different hero at the highest level. So that's basically what this video is going to be about. So let us begin with D.Va. Uh, I'm going to put D.Va in challenging. Now, like you can easily tell between a good and bad D.Va, uh, the more skilled they are, they know how to manage their their matrix a little more. I would argue she's a little bit easier and has a lower ceiling than she did in Overwatch 1 strictly because the matrix is way more forgiving. You really had to resource manage that in Overwatch 1. The hardest part about her now is deciding when to engage, when to disengage, how to like dive or peel, deciding between the play styles, decent tracking, decent all-in mechanics, and then holding out matrix for important stuff, like keeping track of the cooldown. So I would still say she's challenging because it's very easy to feed with her if you don't know what you're doing. And for that reason, she's in the orange challenging tier. Doomfist, right away, Doomfist was rated F tier in season one of Overwatch 2, but realistically, like if we're talking strictly about skill ceiling, he is incredibly hard to master, ultimate mastery. This is a, this is the type of hero where each week it feels like Doom mains, true tank fist Doom mains are discovering new techs and new ways to maneuver around him. It's you, you, Most heroes that are going to be up here are ones with difficult movement mechanics or require like really high skill to extract the max value. Doomfist is one of those. Not only is he not great right now after the slow nerfs to his slam, to make sure you get max value right now, oh man. I watched like Zebra's Doomfist montage. He's very good at using the animation cancel, the ability cancel where you slam block cancel in order to cut the animation and punch him off the map. You need to know where all the, the health packs are and how the movement works in on this hero to make him effective. Then you also have to have decent tracking because you have to flick. After you do your punch, you have to know where they end up so you can primary fire them, know when to block, vertical slam, slow slam, horizontal slam, punch, block, do the... Ugh. Enough said, this guy is incredibly hard to master and it feels like each day Doom players. There's obviously a cap with skill ceiling where like it, it slowly like tapers off, diminishing returns. But Doomfist is one of those where like, I swear in two years we're going to find new Doom techs. Junker Queen, I'm going to put her on hard. I wouldn't say Junker Queen is necessarily hard to master. The most difficult part about her kit is landing that knife, Gracie, and uh, learning your spacing to be effective with your shotgun. The shout is easy, but just is most definitely the spacing and getting the knife in correctly. Actually, upon further review, maybe after saying that out loud, she might be a bit more on the medium side. It's actually just the knife. That's about it. That's the, the highest skill representation. That's the one thing you can keep on improving over time. Orisa, same thing, medium. Uh, some people would argue hard because she has a lot of abilities, but generally speaking, they're not hard to do. You can't get better at using fortify like it's just a single button you don't have to aim it the ultimate is kind of like you just press it and it just you just hold it even the javelin the spin you kind of just walk with it right the hardest part about her similar to junker queen is aiming that javelin throw and then hers was throwing the knife and then hers was also aiming with her shotguns and with orissa's she has pretty much infinite ammo right she has the heat mechanics so maybe you have to pause once in a while but you gotta just hold the button down i, I don't feel like She's like that difficult or challenging to master for those reasons. So that's why I have her on medium. Reinhardt, I also argue between hard and medium as well. The more skill, like there's only so much you can do with the swings and the shield. Like all, all these heroes, like if you have the right mind games, you can, you can argue that they can be difficult or challenging. But generally speaking, I would say Rein, like you can have like one, I think there's like one frame shield uh, block for shatters. I think like Cloudy kind of made popular, but those are just a little flashy. But generally speaking, the hardest part about Ryan is probably aiming the fire strike 
and learning how to use the new curve or turns on the charge. But other than that, the shatter kind of just does it when you click it. The hardest part about him is just the decision making, which you can argue again, everybody has like a decision making factor. In terms of skill representation and mastery of it with the uh, skill ceiling, I'm gonna put him on medium. Roadhog, same thing, one of the easier tanks to play. You arguably could be down here as well under easy. The hardest part about his kit is just learning how to land the hook. Other than that, he's quite the medium based hero to uh, extract the most value on. The better the hog is and the higher levels, it's mostly just their decision making on, on feeding and stuff. Again, we're kind of like isolating that factor out. So for that reason, I'm keeping him on medium. Uh, Sigma, I'm going to put challenging because he has a lot more abilities. He not only has to aim, but he has to have shield and resource management, which is something that these guys don't really have as much as maybe a little bit on Arisa on the ammo, but that one's not really as hard as managing your resources with like cycling your shield, managing your shield health, uh, managing when to cycle your suck cooldown, aiming the rock. The rock has like a weird parabolic curve to it. Uh, learning how to space for your primary fire as Sigma can be a little difficult, right? Strictly because like when you notice when people are really up close to you, it's kind of hard to hit your shots, but learning that max range spacing to keep them at the max explosion range uh, is a difficult, difficult part. Learning how to bounce the orbs too, or the spheres when needed. I would keep Sigma quite challenging to be honest with you. One of the more challenging tanks relative to the other ones. Winston, I'm actually gonna put Winston at a very difficult uh, skill mastery or, or skill ceiling, excuse me. Aiming, like the Tesla cannon primary fire is easy, right? You don't really have to aim, it's very forgiving, but almost every other part of his kit is actually incredibly hard. Like with Ryan, you can put up and down the shield. Sigma, you can put it up or down every like two seconds or whatever. Matrix, you can hold, but this Winston, if you have a bad bubble, that's not good. You have to be very decisive and firm with your decision on the bubble. And every single leap on Winston is difficult. Like you, not difficult, but like, there's actually a million ways to do different types of leaps on Winston. Short leaps, long leaps, line drive leaps, left strafing leaps, right strafing leaps. And Winston's ultimate, like I would normally put him on challenging, but Winston's primal rage is what bumps him up to a very difficult hero to master. Once you learn how to become a juggle god, it is very difficult to learn how to primal primal juggle correctly. Plus he actually has like an aim factor now because you have to poke with his new secondary fire. So Winston is in the very difficult category for me. Wrecking Ball as well, ultimate master. I swear, like every single year since Wrecking Ball came out, new techs keep coming out. I just saw this washing machine tech from uh, Chasm, who I did with, a, who I did a ball tech video with him a while back. But I just saw like a new recent montage on how to do this like ping pong back and forth, like consistently learning to double boop, triple boop, fireball slam movement, playing an effective ball with the pile drive and learning the movement off map geometry. Unbelievably hard to play. Zarya, I'm also gonna put on challenging. It's way easier than it is in, in Overwatch 2 than it is in Overwatch 1 because of, you get back-to-back -back bubbles, but you do need to have like decent management of the bubbles. You still need to be like a little bit more selective and you need to have really good tracking. So like if you're more skilled with tracking and timing your bubbles, you will extract more value, which is why she inherently ranks up like is like higher on this tier list than uh, these these tanks, right? And learning how to aim your secondary fires at distance and nonstop poke uh, makes Zarya, in my opinion, quite challenging. So I'm going to put her here. Movement and mechanics are always going to inherently bring like all the skill ceiling heroes up on this side and then Hard and under would be the more mechanically easier heroes. For that reason, I'm gonna put Ash on hard. Not necessarily challenging, but she is quite hard. Um, landing the dynamites, like any sort of aim or hit scan, heroes are, like I said, naturally gonna be a bit higher. But Ash is relatively more straightforward than these heroes, but like, um, you know, you do have to be, have good precision aiming, good precise aiming with the dynamites and all that. Uh, Bob's not really a hard ultimate to, to shoot, to, to use, but uh, the better you are, the more effective you are for Ash. Actually, I'm gonna put her on challenging for that reason. Bastion, Bastion in Overwatch 1, low skill ceiling because you kind of just plant yourself and let the team like work around you. But in Overwatch 2, I would actually argue Bastion's a lot harder because you have a smaller window of opportunity in that sentry form. You need to have good tracking, right? To aim in the in the sentry form. And it's a small window, so your timing has to be a bit more selective. You have to have some mechanic learning how to use the tactical grenade to rocket jump. And when you're outside of your uh, sentry form, you actually have to have decent tracking to still extract some value for your team while waiting for your sentry form to go up. You have to strafe. You do have to like aim quite precisely to, to, to do stuff for your team. The ultimate's not too difficult, but way harder than she, he was in Overwatch 1. So he's on hard. Same with Cassidy for the same reason as uh, Ash. Same thing. The hardest part, the skill ceiling is like being more precise with the aim. 
That being said, Magnetic Grenade kind of does the work for him and the rest of his skill representation comes from cooldown management and learning when to roll effectively. Like you can roll and take that 50% damage reduction you get on roll and stop like Eva bombs from exploding and killing you or like Tracer Pulse Bomb won't kill you if you time it right. It's not necessarily like a challenging thing to do to roll it, but he's still like harder than these guys. So I'm going to put Cassidy on hard. Echo inherently is an ultimate mastery hero. She's flying hero, one of like the two or three flying heroes in the game if you count Mercy, although Mercy kind of needs someone else to consistently fly. But learning like all the axes and angles from the sky to play your like map geometry correct and not get beamed down. And then the fact that your ultimate inherently means you can duplicate any hero makes it so that you need to kind of master everyone. And that kind of encaps since it encapsulates everybody, I'm going to put Echo in the ultimate mastery. It's also one of the reasons why she's not very common in high, uh, generally speaking, because she's very, very hard to master. Even learning how to like fly in with your spacing and like get the execute beam. It's, it's like the beam's pretty short now, 15 meters, playing the whole airspace correctly to not feed, getting into the beam, getting out, duplicating at the right time to iframe certain abilities. I would honestly think she's very hard to master. High, high skill ceiling. Genji, you can tell when the Genji has godlike mechanics. Like there is some stuff with like ghost dashing, which is a little flashy. You don't need to do that kind of stuff but easily one of a very difficult hero because of the movement on him, the double jumps, wall climbs. He not only has to aim, the secondary fire shurikens are a little easier, but the primary fire is three projectiles, which you have to lead correctly, whether you space them out or you lead them. They're hard to hit projectiles, learning when to commit to dash, learning how to swift step dash to like, you know, play around movement, wall climb, like all that fun stuff makes him a very difficult hero to play. So I'm going to put him up here. Hanzo, way harder than Cassidy. Quite a challenging hero to play because he's projectile based. Storm Arrow kind of dumbs him down. Same with Dragon Strike. But this is a long range sniper. And you it's like very obvious when Hanzo's not doing well. He's like honestly quite challenging to like be consistent, especially. That's why it's very obvious that like the more skilled you are, the more value you extract on this guy. Junkrat. Some would argue medium, but I think the more skilled you are, when I look at players like Aquamarine or other like really strong Junkrat players, they don't just like sit there in one spot and spam. He has a low skill floor, like I said in the other tier list, because you can pick him and like instantly probably hit some people in those ranks. But the higher skilled you get, you'll notice these Junkrat players learn to hit projectile air shots. They can play into counters like Farah pretty well. Learning how to mind jump and like snipe, like hit an air shot with the projectile with the mind follow up right at the end. A lot harder than people uh, give him credit for. I would say he's like less precise because you kind of just have to aim the general, direc general direction with the primary fire into like a mind cancel to burst someone down, which is easier than like being consistent on Hanzo. But he's definitely not like easier medium. I would actually put Junkrat on hard. May, Icicles, a little, little difficult. Learning how to get good wall value uh, and hitting the Icicles are the hardest part of her. Her primary fire is actually quite easy. Like the more skilled you are, not like the primary fire changes too much. If you're in range, you're in range. It's like you just slow them and you're just constantly DPSing. Hardest part, seriously, is the, the wall and the projectile. But like it's not as important in, on May to hit the projectiles like Hanzo which is why she's down here, because like that's only like half her kit. The other value of her kit is like ice blocking, drawing attention, walling people off, getting in range of her primary fire, which is easy. Her ultimate's quite easy as well. Maybe hard wasn't the right word, like right in the middle of the pack. Farah. I've always been a believer that like she's very difficult. And that's the reason why Yazin's like the only Farah player that can like, you can see his, he's mastered this hero and he's ve she's very difficult to play and master that airspace. But Yazin does it to like perfection. The uh, Saudi Arabian player who has like 10 accounts in top 10 all the time. He's like the only far player uh, leading those long, slow projectiles, especially if you play far from a distance. You have to really know how to use that, utilize that, uh, utilize your concussive to change your 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 vectors. The barrage isn't a hard ability, but I don't know. I, I've always been a believer that like she's just so hard to play. So I'm going to put her there. Reaper. I'm going to say Reaper gets capped pretty hard. Like, like it's very impressive with like, you know, ball and doom players because they keep getting like more crazy with the text. But like with Reaper, other than TPing and Wraithing, you're kind of just shooting your gun. And like anybody with half decent aim can like get that value from him. Like the highest level Reapers is just, it's, it's all boils down to decision making. That's like the last factor. There's not too much mechanics to learn on him, so I'm going to put him on easy. Sojourn. I think the slide is kind of what makes her like more challenging rather than hard. I think I don't think it's very hard to build up energy and to like land a railgun. I think that's like the most simplest part and most frustrating part of her cart or, or kit, excuse me. But I'm going to put her on challenging because learning how to do the slide, the slide vertical cancels, 
learning the max disruptor orb ranges and learning your matchups, fighting people in your disruptor orb, cutting people off. Target prioritization on her is very important. I think she's quite a challenging hero, maybe arguably in hard because like you get so much value. But again, that's like the low skill floor kind of debate. I think you can easily tell between a, a, like a good soldier and you can see they're like they get incredible value if they consistently land their rails and all that fun stuff with the movement. I would argue she could even be very difficult. Soldier. Soldier is one of the most basic DPSs, but he does require good tracking to constantly be effective. Good helix rocket. And the reason why he's not in medium and he's in hard is because tactical visor is the easiest part of his kit. But now the fact that you have to aim for the head during tactical visor to extract even more value naturally makes him like a higher skill ceiling hero. Sombra, the tracking is incredibly important after you hack them. If you can consistently, you know, clip supports and clip 200 HP targets with good strafing and deal with those matchups, you will be incredibly powerful on this hero. And it feels like your awareness and like spacing and timing can get even better the the, the more uh, skilled you are. Argue, I would argue Sombra is even like actually very difficult. Symmetra, if the secondary fire now is really easy to aim because the projectile moves so quick. The primary fire beam, the tracking is kind of like the same argument with Soldier and Zarya, but like it's not as imperative the, the biggest part of her skill is learning how to like tp effectively with your team and like play pos like strong positional areas she kind of just holds the fort down if they come to her that's where she can get the most value although there is an argument to be made with like aggressive tp plays and that's like the hard part of her i mean yeah, i mean if you think about it you can definitely tell like a good and bad symmetra i'm thinking of like in top 500 like the really skilled symmetras know how to maneuver between the teleporters uh, actually i would actually put her on hard for that reason not i was I, I was originally gonna put her on medium but the more i think about it there's a lot more stuff at play with her kit torbjorn the hardest part about torbjorn is aiming his primary fire but a shotgun easy turret plays itself his ultimate you just shoot it on the ground so he's like a medium based hero I would argue like relatively easy too, to be honest with you. Yeah, the more skilled you are, you are, it's just learning how to aim that projectile, his primary fire Cheeto. Tracer, very difficult. Arguably an ultimate mastery too. Not only is it even more important to have perfect tracking because of her damage nerf in Overwatch 2, but like spacing to learn how to melee, reload at the right time, and uh, the movement. Oh my God, like every time, like highest level tracers keep impressing me. You can tell like you need to be ultimately mastered on this hero to like get more value and like it is so annoying playing frustrating playing against a perfect tracer that just knows how to dodge everything the movement is impeccable the hitbox manipulation actually with the crouch ad strafing as well on top of it i'm actually gonna put her on ultimate mastery widowmaker very difficult as well her entire kit revolves around your mechanics so if you're really skilled on her you do everything if you don't if you just suck you do absolutely nothing. Yeah, you just gotta go for the headshots, right? That's her entire identity. The sight lines, how to manage like dealing with dive and learning how to just be really slippery and playing in the right angles at the right times and not on top of hitting your shots and applying that pressure. Applying the pressure where it matters. This one's it. Put her in a very difficult. Ana as well. I would say Ana is one of the hardest uh, supports to play. Like a lot of people can extract medium and low to medium value with her just by hitting stuff, nanoing stuff, and nading sometimes. But I might be a bit biased, but I actually think Ana is very difficult once you put everything together. I actually think the hardest part about her is not the aim part, but like learning what to prioritize. Target prioritization matters on everybody, but it matters more on her because she can, she can choose between healing or damage. Aim is an important part. To, sorry, don't get me wrong. but And because you're always like the first one to die, when you get to the supports, a lot of the uh, the skill, the skill ceiling also matters on the, the angles you take and your positioning. Baptiste, I think Baptiste's regen burst and lamp doesn't make him as difficult as Ana because regen burst is a simple button press. Lamp is also a simple button press, two simple button presses. His hardest mechanic is learning how to like aim his uh, healing consistently, but it's hard when you hit airborne targets. Like if you play with like a, a D.Va or Winston flying in the distance and trying to hit him with like a l arcing projectile. But his DPS hit scan is pretty straightforward. You need decent tracking, um, but learning how to hit those is, is quite challenging. His healing, excuse me. And then learning how to maneuver, uh, like the mechanics of shooting and healing, shooting and healing. You'll notice like at the higher ranks, most of the Baptistes can do that. And like the highest, highest level of Baptistes just like manage their cooldowns a bit better. And they can extract a little bit more value on learning when to do the D DPS, DPS healing tempo versus the DPS. DPS heal tempo, but that is core. Like you'll never see 
a high level Baptiste just do healing. They're either doing healing and DPS or double DPS with one healing. Um, so I'm gonna put Baptiste on challenging. Brig, I'm gonna put her on medium. I think Brig's not like a little bit more complicated than she was in Overwatch 1 because like the shield bash is not a stun and you actually, you actually have to learn whether to use like the, the buffed movement distance versus like committing onto a target. It's not hard to like heal someone or hold your shield up, but like hitting a whip shot does require a little bit of aim, especially at long distance to maintain your uptime on the passive. Not super easy, but she's like right in the middle at medium. Here we go. Very difficult. I think anybody who's played her can agree. You need great, like somewhat decent tracking to heal consistently. She has a medium skill floor because the healing, you can always get value if you have semi-decent tracking, but the kunais make her really difficult. And honestly, learning how to time the Suzu's a little bit better can always be like improved upon. So like the best Kiriko players can manipulate that. Wall climbing, figuring out flank angles, being better at hitting the headshots consistently. She's all about headshot value and very easily you can say, yeah, if you're, if you're better, you, you get more value um, and learning when to switch step in and out to commit to disengage same with Lucio Lucio is also very difficult his movement makes him a whole new beast of a hero once like you, you see really good Lucio's right forward wall ride backward wall ride, wall skimming if you ever watch like SK do like these like weird Lucio under the map stuff like that is very very difficult that's not practical in a game so <laughs> I'm not gonna put Lucio on ultimate mastery but it is very difficult to be good with the, the, the wall rides, tempoing and like peeling correctly with the good timing on the boops, uh, learning to lead your projectiles to poke nonstop. I've seen some Lucios with like way, like quite a decent amount of damage by the end of the game because they're just nonstop shooting at the right people at the right time, farming the tanks a little bit. Lucio's a very difficult hero. Mercy used to be very easy, but I think with the new uh, GA slingshot, she can be bumped up to medium. Learning how to manipulate the movement, like the super jump got dumbed down. It is like way easier, just simply press crouch and go up. But I think the harder part or the more medium part of her now is that you can GA in any omnidirectional. Is that is omni eight? What do you call it? 360 degrees. She can go anywhere now, kind of. Oh, I guess on a control uh, on PC, she can only go omnidirectional. On a controller, she can pick any angle. You charge it up, you can go backwards, forward, sideways, manipulate and, and control that with the super jump. She has like a bit more depth to her now. You could argue she could even be hard now with all of her movement, right? But it's not like a more skilled Mercy will like, oh, I guess like a damage and heal more depending on their beam uptime, but like it's just clicking a person, right? There's not much more to it, but it's all about her movement. And honestly, her movement is harder than these people. So like, yeah, you, I mean, and then learning when to damage boost. I, I would argue actually Mercy is like more difficult uh, um, to master. Moira, easy. I think the hardest part is learning how to like fade jump off objects, but you just kind of just press jump at the end of a fade. And that's the hardest part about her. The rest of it just comes down to like when to flank versus like when to like stay back and heal for your team. Uh, Zen, by nature of uh, projectiles, kind of similar how we went with Hanzo. Being consistent with like a good Zen, a higher skilled Zenning, landing uh, long projectiles, getting good secondary fire, like burst shots to like pick people off. And positioning is omega important on this guy. Way more than the other ones, simply because he's so vulnerable to divers. Makes Zen a very challenging hero to master. And uh, yeah, that's the tier list on skill ceiling. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, this is from my perspective. Mine might be a bit skewed, but I'm a lower top 500 uh, flex support player, and I have been for the last six years. Maybe my takes on some of the other heroes may not be correct, but I feel like the support ones for sure feel quite accurate to me. But let me know what you guys think, depending on how you perceive the game, based on what your ranks are and all that good stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.